Welcome to Minnewasha Church on my 50th birthday, today, April 26th. And I'm smiling because I'm so happy about sharing uh, this time with you today. And let me set this up. In 2002, I came to a faith in Jesus Christ. And the way that that happened was I had a friend, a new friend, that continually invited me to a 6 a.m. Bible study on Wednesday mornings. And I think I said no about four or five times. Finally, I went. I woke up at 5.30 in the morning. I just put on like some sweatpants, drove over to a little church in Edina, and started reading the Bible with other men. And the Lord changed my life. I believe I became born again at that time. Well, the, the man, my friend that led that Bible study, and actually that Bible study continues to this day, was also going to a Bible study on Friday mornings at 6 in the morning called Sunrisers. And I started to go to Sunrisers. And that group of men, which at that time, there was a, a, about 25 or 30 men between the ages, uh, get this, of between 18 years old and 99 years old in all different ages in between. But this group of men got together every Friday morning at six in the morning, and it was led by a man named Tom Fox who has led that Bible study for now over 20 years called Sunrisers. Now I have Tom as my guest today, and we're gonna be talking about some things, but I want you to, to catch this. This is gonna be really a good message. Tom and I are gonna talk, and then we're gonna actually have a part two to our talk. The first part is going to be televised like we always have it televised every week on local cable access. But in order to see part two of our message, you'll need to go either to minnewashtochurch.org to our website and listen to it, or you can join our Facebook uh, group, Minnewashta Church Shorewood, and go on that, and you'll be able to listen to part two. And what I'm hoping is that you're going to see both parts and also like us on Facebook and share this message with many, many other people because I know you're going to be blessed today. So I want to introduce my good friend Tom Fox who has led Sunrisers for over 20 years and has preached uh, to many, many people. In fact, I'm going to put up a picture. This isn't our subject today, but Tom was recently in a country in the Middle East where he preached literally to tens of thousands of Muslims. What was that like? Oh, it was amazing when I got to travel to this very restricted nation. And through the, the grace of God, I was called to this nation through a dream. And over several years, the dream came to pass. And next thing I know, I'm preaching to over 100,000 people in a very restricted nation. Wow. Wow. I, I can't even imagine what that would be like. Our subject today is what? That which cannot be shaken. That which cannot be shaken. So our economy is being shaken, our financial systems, our health, our well-being is, is coming into question. That which cannot be shaken is what you want to talk about. Amen. Because everybody is going through very difficult times today and all that the virus has caused, and it began to unsettle the things that were settled. And I want to go to, if you don't mind, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And I think we're going to find some really beautiful scriptures of challenge, of, but of hope also. Because all of us at this time, during these times that we're going through, we all need hope. So we're going to go into it, and I think it's going to be a beautiful study. So if you're listening, please watch this all the way to the end. Because we're going to have a prayer at the end of the message, and I believe you're going to be benefited greatly. Amen. So where do we start, Tom? So you say I, if you've got your Bibles, you're watching, you could get, grab your Bible. And I want to start reading, Mark, Pastor Marcus, out of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. So the word of the Lord says this. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much should if not we not escape if we turn away from whom, him who speaks from heaven? Hmm. And I believe that God today is speaking to the earth. Every tragedy, every problem that goes on in the earth, it's because God releases his hand on, on the situation to draw people back to himself. Mm. 
Every time, the whole purpose of him lifting protection, because many people don't want protection, but God wants to, to put his protection back on the people of the whole earth, but when they don't care about him, when they're going their own way, they're doing their own thing, they don't even have a second thought about a living God. And so what happens is God says, I'll let them run out on their leash. Mm. And what happens is he begins to lift his protection. We see that, Pastor, in the book of Job. When Job uh, was, uh, what happened was that Satan went up and challenged mm -hmm. God about Job who was worshiping the living God. And he said, well, he only worships you because you bless him. Mm -hmm. And so he said, okay, I'm going to lift a hedge of protection that's around him. Yes. And so what happened is that just for a moment, for a short time, the hedge of protection was lifted. But the end result of that whole story is that God was going to bless Job even more than before. Mm -hmm. Twice as much. And this is the opportunity. Yeah. And it reminds me of a verse. I, don't, I, I, I can't quote exactly the chapter and verse, but the Holy Spirit restrains evil. Restrains evil. Imagine how horribly evil the world would be if the Holy Spirit didn't restrain evil. There's still evil, but it's res the, much of it is restrained Absolutely. by the Holy Spirit. So we see that in Thessalonians. We see at the end times that that which, was, which restrains will be removed. Hmm. And many believe, many theologians believe that which is removed is the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And it will be a horrible time when the Holy Spirit is not in people. Now, many would bring that to a conclusion that that which is being restrained is that the Holy Spirit in the people of God that are following after Jesus that they're taken out of the way in what is called the rapture. But I don't want to go there today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to just talk about there is a place that you can go today that you will find peace. You'll be uh, not anxious, but you'll be in perfect calmness, even no matter what's going on in your life. And no. there, there is a way out, and it is in to Jesus Christ. Amen. See, I was talking... Uh... A couple of days ago, I, I don't know if you saw this video, <clears throat> but I talked about Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Now, if you go, you can go on our Facebook site and you can see this video that I made. It's about a seven-minute video. And I talked about how Jehoshaphat was presented with insurmountable odds. There were three armies coming up against the people. His immediate reaction, if you look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3, is he's afraid. Nothing wrong with that. He's afraid. However, immediately it says he's afraid, he seeks the Lord. He seeks the Lord. And I'm thinking now, Tom, on the way over here, I was uh, remembering that it, liquor sales are up 30 or 40%. Uh, marijuana, where it's legal, the sales are up. This, these pornography is, is being widely distributed uh, as a free service around the world in many, many countries. So people are racing around trying to find comfort, trying to find a place of rest, when in fact, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of all peace. Amen. And you won't, find, peace. you won't find what you're looking for in all those alternatives. That you will not find the peace that goes deep into the soul. I have been talking to uh, other brothers and sisters who are in the Lord. And I've asked them, are you anxious? Are you not in peace? And they've all said, no, I'm not anxious at all. Mm. I'm in peace. It's because they had come to Jesus as the only place to find peace. And now they're resting in that peace. But also, they had been in the scriptures. They had been in prayer. They had been going after God hard. So when the, when the time comes and all the testing comes that we're going through, mm -hmm. they're not moved at all. Because mm -hmm. they know they have a history of walking with God and trusting in him and seeing him come through every single time. Now, one thing that this is um, bringing to my mind, too, is, so God is the God of all comfort, okay? The real comfort comes from Jesus. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, you can look this up, it says, the God of all comfort comforts us so that we're able to comfort others with that same comfort we've received from Christ, amen? So it's, he comforts us, and then we comfort others, and then we're pointing to Jesus Christ. And the reason that I'm calling out that verse is that we can scramble, and then finally we can find our rest and comfort and peace in Jesus, which we should, but also look up and look around you. 
I was at Cub this morning. You should have seen the faces of the people at Cub. They, they were so sad and so serious and so distraught. And I had my scarf around my face, and I'm, I'm trying to be as respectful as I can. I've got my I Love Jesus hat covering my unwashed hair. <laughs> this is behind the scenes. This is what, what I really look like. Um, I Love Jesus hat, got my scarf, and I'm seeing the sad faces, and I kind of blew it. I don't know if I blew it or not, but you know what I really felt like doing? I, I, I almost did this. I was going to pull my scarf down, and I was going to start yelling and preaching to all of the people in the grocery store, no matter if I get kicked out or not, bringing the hope of Christ. And you know what the Lord did? Instead, there was a woman in the, in the, uh, in the parking lot that like, kind of walked up and started talking to me. So I started talking about Jesus to her, and she was getting encouraged because she was a Christian also. And then the Lord said, go to church today and put up a sign uh, saying, uh, call or text for prayer. And so this morning, I actually went out and put up a sign that wow. says, for prayer, call. And I put my cell phone number, and I put call or text us number, hoping that people will call and text. So uh, we not only have that comfort and rest, but I'm pressing the button. I'm trying to give you the impression. Remember to share that with others. Point the way to Jesus to others. Amen. And you know, the scripture you were talking about, it talks about those that have been comforted. And I, when you said that, the first thing I thought about is that God is building a testimony. Hmm. God is building a testimony in your life. Amen. As you go through the trial, as you go through the difficult mm -hmm. times, maybe it's financial, maybe you're out of work, or whatever the problem is. Maybe you, you've caught the virus. But whatever it is, that you are going to be a testimony. And God wants to use the testimony to, to bring a differentiation, a difference between you and other people. And he wants to encourage other people to have what you have. And so you will now be comforting others with the same comfort that you've been comforted with. Interestingly, Jesus says, if I go away, I will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also referred to as the comforter. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it is. It is. So I wanted to keep reading, if you don't mind. And uh, let's keep going in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And it says, now whose voice then shook the earth... But now he has promised. Now this is a prophetic word saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of all things that are being shaken as of the things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken mm. will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen. So there, what God is telling us, there have been many shakings throughout the history of the earth. And they come and go. I guarantee you there'll be more shakings coming down the road. Mm -hmm. And in the end times, we see that in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke 21, that, that this is only the beginning of sorrow. So there will be more mm -hmm. shakings. But the whole purpose, Pastor, is to bring people unto him, unto the living God, Amen. unto Jesus Christ. So there are, what this scripture is talking about is that there are, there's a place you can go where no matter all the shaking is going on around you, but you can be in perfect peace and be in a place that is not shaken, and that place is in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God wants to bring us into the kingdom of God. Now I'm going to tell you at the end of this videos at the end of this, this recording how to get into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Many people are saying, how can I get into the kingdom of God? We're going to talk about that and how you can get and go into this place where is perfect peace. Now, I've got to admit to you and confess this to you. Um, the other day, Sunday, um, I was so weary. I was stressed out. I was crabby. I, uh, I, I, I was just overwhelmed. And um, that lasted a good, almost the entire day on Sunday. It was like that. Uh, I decided, hey, I've got I've to come to church. I've got to come and like just be out of the house for a little while. And so, uh, so I came in on Sunday, I came in on, 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 or I came in on Monday and Tuesday. And then, and then I wrote the whole church on Tuesday and then did a short video 
about not being overwhelmed and not, uh, you know, being stressed out and things like that. Well, I'm just being candid that there are times as a human being that you are going to be overwhelmed. You are going to be stressed out. There are times where it's not, you know, 100% of the time we're 100%, at least in my case, stress-free or worried-free. However, those times, it's almost like sun, uh, the clouds going over the sunshine. You know, it starts to look, you know, the sunlight goes down and it gets dim for a minute, and then the, the cloud keeps on moving, and that sun brightly shines again. And for the Christian, the Son of God... The, the, the Son of Man, the Son, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, shines brightly, okay? So I don't want you to be discouraged if you're not shining brightly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because I don't know anybody that is. No, it's not that you don't go through those times, but you have a place to go. Hmm. You have a place you can go. Amen. And it's a, like a familiar path. You know, you've, have you ever seen high grass? And you're maybe you're in a field, and there's, <laughs> yeah. and the, but all of a in sudden there's been something that's been frequented. It's a path that ah. goes to maybe a big oak tree, and and you've looked at the path, and you're looking down the road through this path, and you and you don't want to go through the high grass, but you go down something that has been frequented. So when you frequent, go back to the place that is now yours in the mm. kingdom of God. Amen. Because we could walk away. I could. I could, I could go out and go into my own flesh and go into my own soulish nature, yeah. and I can become fearful, I can become scared, I can become uh, dreary, I can become all those things. Yeah. But the moment I say, oh, i got to go back down that path, and that path is to the person of Jesus. And that's why we need each other. We need each other because I'm sure that I had friends praying for me, and I'm praying for others, and then a friend calls and, and, and kind of just reminds you of that path to go lead you back to Jesus. Not that Jesus ever left us because he never leaves us, but just reminding us and helping us get our bearings. But that's why we need each other. That's why we need the fellowship of other Christian friends. And I'm so thankful that, that at Minnewasha we're doing our best to call one another. Call one another. Email one another. Uh, send a note to one another. It, it's so helpful to, to hear from other believers. Amen. Amen. So if you're in that place and you're a believer, you know the Lord Jesus, you can go back into the place of peace. Mm. There's a door. There's a door of hope that you can walk through. Now, how do we get there? We're going to talk about that at the end. And I'm going to ask you this I'm now. Gonna, you're going to have to wait, but we're going to show how do I, as a believer or a non-believer... But there's more. <laughs> how can I even begin this path? Now, I want to ask you, I'm putting, uh, this is improv improvised. So you said earlier that we have a testimony... Yes. Okay, and that that testimony can be used. Okay, and now a man who's been preaching for decades, um, you're talking about that path and going back that well-worn grass back to Jesus. Okay, so give me an example of a time that was difficult for you that you were drawn back to that place of rest. Sure, I've I've been I've had difficult times many times in my life. But the Lord is faithful. Now, going back to Second Chronicles chapter 20, you see the steps that Jehoshaphat took to get back into a place of peace. You just talked about it last week, right? This week. This week. Tuesday. Second, okay. You In, interesting. I've I got to say this because I'll forget it. So I called Tom, asked Tom if he would be uh, here for the Sunday service, and we started talking. And I said, by the way, Tom, uh, earlier today I gave a message on Second Chronicles about Jehoshaphat. So we figured out that at the same hour, Tom was in a pastor's meeting talking about Jehoshaphat and Second Chronicles chapter 20, which was amazing. That is amazing. That was. Anyway. So, but if you take the, the process that Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel went through, because what happened, they got the intelligence report that multiple kings are coming after them, and they're going to come and kill them. Now, this wasn't like, like going down to your church and saying, you know, I disagree with your doctrine. These guys were coming with swords and spears and arrows and shields, and they were to coming. Wipe them out. They were coming to eliminate you. So, and they, the, when multiple kings, that means that there's many more people on their side that's on your side. Mm -hmm. So, what did they do? He feared. That was that's very human, and we all do that. And then, what did he do next? He sought the Lord, mm -hmm. but then he began to remind God 
about and himself about all the times that God had come and rescued him mm. before. And see, when you begin a track record with God, you'll see how he always comes through and rescues you. And he'll, he, he, well, he'll you know, what would be the final rescue? He would take you into glory. Some people, some believers have actually gone into glory, and that was the final rescue. Enoch. He was walking Enoch with God. Enoch was and walking he with God, and he was caught up. He yeah. never went through death. By he, the way, he's mentioned, in, isn't he, in chapter 11 of Hebrews? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Okay. So anyway, so what happened next? He began to say, God, you're, we're in covenant. And a covenant is an unbreakable oath. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, what happens is that God has gone into covenant with you saying, so to speak, that he would have to cease to exist if he would ever break his covenant with you the moment you came to Christ and believed in him and put your trust in him. So God is a covenant. And so he started reminding him of the covenant. And then they got to the final point. Before the remedy came, the solution came, the way out came, it was where he was saying, God, this army is coming against us is too big for us. Mm -hmm. We don't mm. even know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Mm. And at that moment, the moment, and that's biblical faith, but he was admitting his human weakness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're all weak. Blessed are the weak. So God is saying, if you will come to me and say, I don't know my way out of this problem. I don't know how to go past where I am. Some are even feeling like giving up. Some may even feel like, I'm just gonna, I'd rather just be dead now with all this that's going on. Mm. But there is a way out. And the moment they confessed their weakness, but they said, our, uh, my, our eyes are on you, Lord. Mm. And it was immediately after that that God, this Holy Spirit came. As soon as they admitted their weakness, the Holy Spirit falls on a prophet. They admitted their weakness and, the great, and, and God's greatness. And the greatness of God. Yes. And the greatness of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit came upon them. And he gave directions, specific directions, how to defeat and overcome the army. Yeah, well, and the armies that were coming against Jehoshaphat turned on one another and wiped each other out. And uh, so the battle belonged to the Lord. And um, so we can rest in that. We, we can rest and not be afraid. Amen. Now, I want to go, we were reading in Hebrews chapter 12, and I want to read something out of Haggai, the, the second chapter. And we're going to read uh, verses 6 and 7. It says, For thus says, this is a, a companion scripture to Hebrews chapter 12. It's in the Old Testament, it's in the Minor Prophets. And it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. Mm. The part that you don't see in Hebrews 12 is that not only he's going to shake heaven and earth, but he's going to shake all nations. Mm. And then they, sh and, but look at what happens after the shaking. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. And all those are capitalized. Hmm. That means they shall come to Jesus Christ. That the shaking and the purpose of all shaking was to bring people back to Jesus or to Jesus for the first time. And then look at this. And then I will fill this temple with the glory, says the Lord of hosts. Hmm. So God will fill and this is all prophetic language from the Old Testament in, in kind of in the times that we are now. That God will draw you unto the desire of all the nations, which is Jesus Christ. You know, I, I was up uh, the other night. I, I realized that drinking coffee at 4 o'clock in the afternoon is not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm blessed. I fall asleep like a Labrador retriever. I mean, I'm out fast. That's a blessing. But when I drink coffee... I have that gift too. Do you? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but if I drink coffee late in the day, boom, I'm up at like 2 or 3 in the morning and it's like, you know, the, 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 the middle of the day. So anyway, I wake up at 3 o'clock. I was up for an hour and I sat down and I read Zechariah, Old Testament uh, minor prophet from, you know, 13, all 13 chapters. Or, yeah, all 13 chapters. And um, you read Zechariah... And you read over and over again how powerful the Lord is, how amazing. incredibly powerful. Oh, it's amazing. And what it put in me was uh, the reminder, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, we fear all of these things, but we're casual with God. 
when in fact God is so incredibly powerful. He's more powerful than anything we could possibly imagine. He's immeasurably powerful. And then I read uh, Habakkuk chapter 3 and the very last verses of Habakkuk. And if you were here in church, the very last service we had, I think was on March 15th. And I stood up here and Gil usually sets up the microphone and we do a sound check. As people were coming into our sanctuary, I read over and over again the last two or three. Look these up. Uh, look at Habakkuk chapter 3, the last few verses. And it essentially says, if there is no cattle in the, in the barn, if there's no this, if there's no fruit on the vine, if there's this and that, and all of this is just gone away. Food and sustenance and job and provision. And then he says, yet I will worship the Lord. I will worship Amen. the Lord. He will lead me up like deer, like, like hinds feet on the deer. And uh, that is so nourishing. So even if things are fading away, we have to realize how powerful God is. Worship God. Trust him. Make him the focus. And, not, and then the things that are going on down here will kind of fade away. Just like that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the, the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I think I'm quoting that right. Amen. Now, you asked me an earlier question about m me going through difficult times. Yes, and we're going to save that. We're, we're going to save, save that. that. Okay. We're going to save it uh, for part two of this video. So at the beginning of this, I said... I wasn't skirting it. I was not skirting no, it. No, I know you weren't. <laughs> I know. I'll take the blame for this. I think it's kind of fun. So what we're doing is... Go to our Facebook site, Minnewashta Church, or go to our website, minnewashtachurch.org, okay? And then you're going to see or listen to part two of the message. There are people that watch this on television, so you'll only see the first part on television, and it won't be broadcasted part two. But for part two, we're going to talk about Tom's personal testimony of that, and then how to get into this place, this place of rest, where you can find complete comfort and rest, which is in Jesus Christ. So... Uh, God bless you. We're going to wrap this up, and we'll be back in a minute with the part two of our message with Tom Fox.